Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can automate your home devices with an ESP8266 and an Arduino Nano board. You will see here the build up from the last time, except that now there is a power line to the Arduino, so there is no USB connection anymore. The ESP is just connected as in my other video which will be linked below or here. You can see where's the power supply, where's an LED that is new. This LED is connected to pin 11 of my Arduino Nano and uh, this is just a resistor to protect the LED. And as you can see it's turned off right now. This LED represents your home uh, your home device. The rest is just the same as before and if you have any questions about that check out my other video. Now we want to turn this LED on with just my browser. Here I have opened Chrome and I have added in an IP address and pin number. In this case I used the pin of the LED. Now I will go to that page and it says pin 11 is on and if you check this you can see the LED is on now. If I call the page again the LED will be turned off. Let's do that while you watch the LED. Have you seen that? That's it. This is great. And if you use such a device and you add it to pin 11, then you can turn higher current devices like a lamp or anything which runs in your walls. These are cheap, these are 1 euro, the Arduino is 3 euro, this thing is 2 euro and this is 1 euro around that. So all in all this is quite cheap. Let's have a look at the code. So here we have a code and for the setup it's similar to last time except that this time we have to put it as an access point and you also have to put in your uh, SSID hard coded in here. So no more using the serial monitor. I actually reused code from uh, all about EE. I will link his uh, blog entry in uh, below the video. It's worth checking it out and uh, kudos for him to for coding this. So I basically reused his code. Uh, I shortened it for my purposes and uh, I made it uh, more comprehensive for this video. So what you do after you connect to it, you get your um, IP address and then you configure it as the server at the end. This is this line of code. This configures it as a server on an HTTP port actually. So the first time you connect, uh, you upload your code, upload it with uh, the serial print lines not out commented. You can do this by say going to edit, find and in the find menu you just uh, write in slash slash uh, serial print and you replace it with no slashes. This is the easy way. Upload it, connect it to your serial monitor and check for the IP address. Once you have the IP address you can uncomment the serial print line thing again because it will interrupt the code if uh, uh, Arduino is not connected to a serial monitor and then your code won't run. So let's go to the interesting bits. When you connect to your Arduino via the ESP, the ESP is getting a message and this message will start with plus IPD. And then there is something like get code and everything if you use a web browser. 
I didn't use get here because get is very specific for web browsers while I plus IPD is for every device. So I could use an app from the App Store to control my Arduino or I could write an app myself. First thing you have to do is to get your connection ID to be able to terminate the connection at the end. And the most interesting part is this part where you check the URL you are given. It's actually giving its URL it's requesting and it uh, has pin is 11 in my URL. You will have to put this uh, manually. So you just uh, after the IP address you type in like this. Um, in my case it was you just put a uh, question mark and then you can say like pin is 11 for example or whatever pin you want to uh, use. In my code I modified the code so that pin mode is set when you use a pin. So even if you don't use pin 11 you will be able to control it. But you won't have a certain output before so you want to uh, configure your starting points in the setup script. The code here just reads in the number which is behind pin is when the code is just sending pin is to the Arduino. This is done here. If you're really interested in the code you can download it below or you can check out the original example. I also used his send comment function which is basically the same thing we did last time except that it's now in a separate function. So it's easier to use. and Last time we didn't have one because we just mirrored what was given to the serial monitor. So that's it already. It's very nice to reuse code in this example because there is already some code available for your use. And it's very easy to adapt it. So that's it already for today. Now you have a working piece of code you can use for your Arduinos and your ESP modules. And when you can control your own LEDs or whatever device you want with an ESP module. In one of the next videos I will show you how to control the ESP directly and program it so that you don't have to use an Arduino for a web server. In that case you can control your LED directly with an ESP and uh, some power supply. In this case I will probably use this again. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and happy coding!